ya sekarang sudah bertambah pesertanya ya. 338. Mungkin ada beberapa yang agak susah masuk. Kayak saya tadi. Usul uh, uh, Pak Ketua sebaiknya nggak dimulai saja ya. Karena kita juga berhubungan dengan orang luar ya. Mungkin ya, ya. ketepatan waktu juga menjadi hal yang penting. Ya, ya. ya. ya Dr. Yosif, 10-10 kita mulai ya. Ya, dok. Saya persembahkan lagu untuk Dokter Rusin. Hui, Dokter Rusin se- se- seorang ya. Ayo. Kayak naik Garuda. I think for the Garuda. Prosucit, prosucit. Uh, I think, uh, okay. If you go a little bit forward, so we can see your face. But if you go backward, this is like a bad light. Ah, okay, good. Okay, silakan mau dimulai, silakan. Ya. Baik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all of us. The Honorable the Chairman of Indonesian Association of the Faculty of Dentistry, Afdogi, and all of the members. The Honorable all of our speakers, Professor Cortino Sukocho, DDS PhD from the University of Illinois at Chicago, Professor Dr. Suchit Pongtong from Faculty of Dentistry, Chula Longkorn University, Thailand, Professor Dr. Rosna Binti Momadzin, Faculty of Dentistry, Massa University, Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participant. I would like to warmly welcome you all today in the Virtual International Clinical Education Conference in theme, sharing experiences in clinical education during pandemic COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, as the beginning of our event today, we will listen together the Indonesia anthem, Indonesia Raya. Thank you. 
Now I would like to invite to give a welcome speech the chairman of Indonesian Association of the Faculty of Dentistry, Dr. Gi, and she's also the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Pajajaran University of Indonesia, to Dr. Dr. Gigi Nina Jusdianarangkas. Please, the time is yours. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to address the opening of today's seminar on sharing experiences in clinical education during COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the Indonesian Association of Faculty of Dentistry, I would like to express my gratitude and highly appreciation to our distinguished speaker, Professor Cortino Sukocho, DDS PhD from University of Illinois at Chicago, USA. Professor Susit Pultrong, sorry, it is not right spelling, <laughs> Dean of Faculty of the Industry, Chulalangkron, University of Thailand. Professor Dr. Rosnah Binti Muhammad Zain, Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Mahsa University, Malaysia. Thank you very much for your time to share experiences in clinical education during COVID-19 pandemic. We are sure it will enrich our knowledge of starting our clinical education activities COVID-19 has impacted dental education all over the world. While some aspects of dental education can be done online, the risk of the dental clinical education is halted. In this seminar, it is attended by lecturer from 32 faculty of dentistry all over Indonesia. We are excited to learn how dental clinical education can progress during this pandemic in other countries. Last but not least, I would like to thank to the chairperson for this seminar, Dr. Muhammad Ruslin Emkes, SPBM, a PhD, and also to Faculty of Dentistry, University Hasanuddin, and also to the uh, organizer, uh, Professor Ari Astuti, Dr. Saifi, Professor uh, Monang, Dr. Rahadian, Dr. Trelia, and Dr. Weda. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you for all the speakers and also for all participants for your time. Hopefully the pandemic will be over soon. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the seminar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished participants, now we will uh, continue to the session of presentation that will be led by a chairperson, Dr. Gigi Muhammad Ruslin M. Kas, PhD, Specialist Bidang Health Consultant. I will read a brief curriculum today of the chairperson. He was born in Pankajene, South Sulawesi, in 1973. He graduated as dentist from University at the year 2000. Graduate as specialist of oral and extrafacial surgeon from Pajajan University in year 2009. PhD graduate from Praia University Medical School, ACTA Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and now he is the Dean of Dentistry Faculty at Sanudin University. So, Dr. Rusin, please, the floor is yours. Thank you for the MC to introduce me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam kebajikan untuk kita semua. Good morning, everybody. It's a honor for me as the chairman of this virtual international clinical education conference with them sharing experiences in clinical education during pandemic COVID-19 
And today we have three great speakers from abroad that will share us their experiences. The first is Professor Cotino Sukocho, DDS PhD from College of Dentistry, the University of Illinois at Chicago, USA. The second is Professor Dr. Suchit Poltong, the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. And the last is Professor Dr. Rosna Binti Muhammad Sain, Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Mahsa University, Malaysia. For our first presentation, the first is Professor Cortino. I will read a brief curriculum vitae of his before we starting. Slide, please. Slide, please. Professor Cortino is an associate professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago University. He received his degree from the Pakistan Indonesia, followed by his degree from University of Los Angeles, certificate of Mastrontic, Master from Harvard School of Dental Medicine. He is a diplomat of American Board Certified Prostrontic Fellow of the Academic Prostrontic. Also a co-author, more than 145 peer-reviewed articles, book chapters. Professor Cortina, it's all yours, please. Okay, so let me share my slides. Uh, good morning, everyone. Bisa dengar suara saya? Yes, bisa. Loud and clear. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, my professor, my teacher, my classmate, my colleagues, my students too, probably. Um, And then, um, good also good morning for the um, for uh, Prof. Rosna and Prof. Suchit. Uh, today, uh, because uh, you know most of the speaker, most of the audience, they are from Indonesia, so I'm gonna talk uh, in Bahasa Indonesia and then just a little bit of English. Okay, so please excuse uh, me for that. Um, okay, so so I have uh, 30 minutes to present this. Uh, saya uh, UIC uh, adalah um, salah satu dental klinik yang uh, faculty yang uh, buka, uh, you know, yang, yang pertama buka di Amerika. So we opened our clinic one month ago. Uh, our clinic was open probably around one one and a half months ago, and then our clinic was uh, we opened it one month ago. Okay, so early, uh, early actually is early June, uh, second week of June. Um, so, you know, why, how can we open it? Because of the lobbying, uh, lobbying from uh, the, the dean uh, to the governor, to the to the provost, and also to the governor. Karena apa? Karena kita di kedokteran gigi tentu uh, sedikit berbeda dengan fakultas yang lain, di mana uh, online learning is, you know, is not enough for us. Uh, kita tetap saja harus melakukan uh, preklinik karena kita menyandra kita melakukan hand skill uh, kemudian juga uh, klinik you know that's, that's the, the most important part okay jadi makanya setelah itu kita memutuskan untuk uh, buka walaupun uh, pada waktu sekitar satu setengah bulan yang lalu dua bulan lalu itu state of Illinois itu termasuk uh, yang paling uh, the, uh, probably the top five uh, uh, masyarakatnya yang kena COVID. Oke, okay, sekarang tapi sudah menurun. Anyway, so let's talk about uh, general rules for dental school. Uh, sudah ini saya akan banyak sekali gambar-gambar yang saya akan bisa jelaskan apa yang what have we done so far, uh, you know, to make sure everything is, you know, uh, uh, the clinic is run smoothly and then uh, so far we don't have uh, any outbreak yet. Oke, okay, so general rules for dental school. 
uh, you know, I think, of course, the most important part is social distancing, six feet uh, or, you know, or two meters uh, between uh, all people, between the students, between the, uh, among the patients, and then the patients and the faculty also, okay? And then uh, there's no more, uh, we don't allow people, more than 10 people per group, uh, you know, having a meeting in our school. And then uh, this is a UIC policy, actually, it's not only dental school policy, UIC policy wear masks all the time, except for when you are alone and eating in your in your office. And then uh, uh, we should not have a meeting in person unless there's no alternatives. Uh, uh, four and also less than five people. And then if you want to have a meeting, less than five people, and also you should have a social distancing also when you sit. And then uh, I strongly encourage to have an online meeting. And then avoid non-essential or intra or intra-campus work. So we want people just in and out. Uh, you know, they are do what is important. And then after that, once you are done, uh, you go home. Okay, and then we don't want people to cluster in any uh, confined spaces. Uh, and we want to increase the space between the workstations. Nanti saya akan jelaskan apa maksudnya itu, di mana kita pada waktu menggunakan dental unitnya juga, you know, kita pakai, kita kosongin, kita pakai. Kemudian, uh, kita kursi-kursi, uh, kita rotate uh, the desk to, the face, uh, to face the same direction. Uh, avoid using others' phones, a desk, no more hand shaking. Oh, kita dulu pada sering hand shaking, sekarang no more hand shaking. And then this is another important part, enhance housekeeping services. Okay, jadi di mana uh, housekeeping itu penting sekali untuk melap-melap semuanya, kaca-kaca, kemudian juga resume is very important, particularly for the patients. You know, they have to do it before, uh, they only do it like around, you know, one or twice a day. Now they have to do it like three to four times a day. Okay, so this is the hierarchy controls of the when you have a pandemic. Uh, you know, the first one, the elimination substitution, we cannot really uh, do anything about it. But we, as a you know, as a institution, we can uh, do uh, control. The, we can perform engineering controls, I mean, controls, and of course, lastly, uh, we can talk. I'm going to talk also about the PPE. Okay, now well, the first one is where I'm going to talk about engineering controls. Apa yang sudah kita lakukan at the campus? Okay, yang sudah kita lakukan di kampus, eh, yes, a uh, lot of people will talk about uh, negative room. Okay, uh, we do have it. Uh, ini adalah negative room yang sebelah kanan ya, bukan sebelah kiri. Uh, negative room, negative pressure room itu yang sebelah kanan itu. Uh, kita convert uh, clinical research menjadi negative pressure room. This is during the early phase of the uh, pandemic. So probably around January, February, or like around March. Okay, karena ada sekolah tutup pada waktu itu, karena kita mesti ada emergency, we have an emergency, so we convert this uh, room to negative pressure. Okay, at that time we don't really know what you know what to do, so we just you know uh, just do it. Okay, so we spend a lot of money, the dean spend a lot of money to to build this, and then I uh, don't know later on we can have a discussion or you know what is the plus minus of having this kind of a room, okay, in our building. Uh, and then uh, you know I saw some a uh, lot of people actually in some school they use uh, instead of putting a door uh, they use this kind of a, a plastic uh, barrier okay plastic door so it will be easier for people in and out uh, and then also to isolate the um, aerosol too okay so this is another thing that uh, recently uh, our uh, building uh, our dean uh, you know implement this okay so we use uh, this call, uh, you know, so some kind of like uh, air, uh, air purifier <coughs> using menggunakan uh, teknologi ozon. Um, seperti yang anda lihat semuanya dalam waktu satu dua hari semuanya uh, klinik ada beberapa klinik yang tutup kemudian uh, vent, uh, uh, ventilasi udaranya semuanya diganti dengan menggunakan filter ini. Ya, di semua klinik bukan hanya di general klinik untuk dental student tapi juga klinik-klinik uh, untuk semua spesialis. Oke. Okay. And kemudian juga, how do we protect ourselves? Well, actually, this is, has been, you know, we, this is the way traditionally, this is the way we protect, uh, we, we uh, uh, protect our chairs, okay? Uh, we use a lot of plastics, as seperti anda lihat di sini, baik lampunya, kemudian juga uh, suction-nya, dan yang, yang baru adalah, we don't provide, we don't use this kind of a searing anymore, okay? We try to minimize it, karena uh, this kind of searing will produce uh, aerosol. Okay, so uh, we purposely not, no, you do not put the, the tips in the drawer. Okay. And also, you know, I think everyone knows this. So, you know, if you, if you are working on the patients, of course, you have to, once you're done, uh, you have to always uh, disinfect 
uh, you know, around a uh, very, very around six feet. People even say now nowadays they have to do, to do it in the radius of uh, eight feet uh, from the patient's uh, head. Okay, so this is and then this is the and also do you know uh, please do not forget to wipes all the uh, your computers you know not only the dental related uh, units uh, but also your chairs <coughs> and so forth. And then uh, this is uh, the disinfectant that we use uh, over there in our school. Okay, we, we used previously we use cover site now we, and then we change to uh, cafe uh, and then last uh, then last one is will be we're going to use Optim one wipes okay so uh for coffee site we want you know this one can kill disinfect in five minutes but the optim one you know we it can disinfect everything uh, uh in one minute and then what about for the dental unit dental unit we uh, modify too uh you know so these days uh the recommended uh, procedure will be uh, you can use uh to to reduce aerosol adalah anda menggunakan uh, rubber dam kemudian juga anda harus menggunakan uh, HVE, high vacuum uh, uh, suction, uh, dan study has sudah menunjukkan bahwa uh, high vacuum suction itu bisa will reduce 90% of the uh, aerosol bila anda menggunakannya properly in the, you know uh, properly. Tapi the, the problem dengan menggunakan high vacuum suction adalah unit assistant, okay? You need a forehand dentistry because it's very, it's you know it's very hard to to manipulate it. Okay, so the uh, the clinic kita juga menggunakan yang kanan ini adalah namanya adalah uh, iso dry. Okay, salah satu alat yang kita bisa pakai kalau kita sendiri uh, di mana itu seperti dihubungkan dengan high vacuum suction. Dan uh, saya sudah bertanya, I already asked my student, you know, what do they feel about it? And then they say, you know, they really like it. Okay, the student is usually very honest. You know, if they don't hate, if they hate it, they will going to say this is a trash. Okay, if they like it, they're going to say they they love to, to use it. Okay, and then uh, yesterday, actually, our Associated for Clinical Affairs uh, announced uh, announced it that we are starting next week. We can use this one. It's called PureFact uh, HVE Tips. Okay, this is produced by a dense fly. Uh, I haven't really used. I've never used it. But the the the, the, the difference adalah uh, di tipsnya itu di ujungnya itu juga ada uh, mirror. Okay, so uh, and then they they then they said that you can. Uh, use this along with your handpiece because now you have a mirror and then now you have a suction, so you can do one uh, two hand dentistry instead of four hand dentistry. Okay. Uh, and then there's a lot of debate about using this uh, uh, external uh, suction. To be honest, our school we do okay. We don't our school we don't use it, and unfortunately there's no study you know really related to it. Okay, so. Uh, I know I heard you know some some people you know some I like the uh, University of Connecticut they are thinking about you know about using it but so far at least in our school we have not used it okay we have not purchased even purchased it uh, and then for the registration uh, you know everything you know we put uh, uh, you know a barrier as you can see here you know we put um, uh, like a plastic you know when the uh, customer service, you know, when the receptionist, when they talk to the patients. And then for the one on the right side, you know, that's the way we register our patients. And all the, these people, they have to use at least, you know, surgical masks. So the one that's going to use, uh, if they don't see patients, like clerk, uh, you know, people in the, in the finance department, they can use only uh, regular uh, cloth masks, okay? Masks that are made from kind. Tapi kalau untuk orang-orang yang ketemu dengan pasien, when they see patients, they have to use minimum of surgical mask. And also, you know, we provide a lot of sanitizer, you know, everywhere. It's easy for the patients, for the faculty also. Okay, the one on the right side, we, you know, we provide a hand sanitizer as well as the uh, uh, infrared uh, thermometer for our patients. Okay, so, and then we do two check points. The first one is when the patient enter the building, and then the second one is before we sit them into the chair, into, into you know, as the patients. We, you know, we did all the screening, you know, two times. Okay, so this is Adla. Ini Adla Clinic dari University of Louisville. Saya kebetulan berkunjung ke, ke mereka, you know, ke University of Louisville beberapa uh, satu bulan yang lalu. Seperti anda lihat, this is the way they. Uh, manage their clinic, so they separate uh, the area between non-aerosol procedures and aerosol procedures, the one on the right side, okay? And then for the PG uh, area, they have their own clinic, uh, you know, they have their own room, as you can see here now, before they don't have a, 
uh, they don't have a the um, door. Now they 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 put a plastic door, you know, to reduce uh, aerosol from coming out, you know, from out, uh, coming out, out of the room. Okay, now let's talk about administrative uh, controls, okay, for the, the student, uh, faculty, and the staff. It's easy to control the faculty, it's easy to control the staff, but it's very hard to control the students, okay? Ada, saya dengar malah, ada one dental school in the in the south, actually, maybe like one month ago, actually, they did uh, have an outbreak, and uh, unfortunately, the, actually, well, fortunately, the outbreak was not happened at school, okay, originated from school, but anak-anaknya uh, itu, you know, because they are still young, you know, they went to the club and then, you know, and then that's where they got the COVID, okay? And then, you know, and then they didn't know and then they went to school, okay? So, and then they had an, out, they had an outbreak. Okay, so what is the first rule? The first rule is, of course, no, no shaking and then everyone has to wear uh, a mask, okay? So this is, these two are the, you know, uh, our, our staff. Uh, they're not shaking, okay? But they are just, uh, you know, posing for my picture. So they, everyone is wearing a mask, surgical mask. And then the one on the right side, this is the Office of Clinical of the Associated for Clinical Affairs. You know, they put a sign, please do not enter. You know, if you want to, if you want to do, if you need anything, you know, ring, ring the bell and then we're gonna come to you. Okay, just to minimize interaction between, between peoples. Okay, and then this is the entrance. Now, UIC, uh, you know, we usually, we have three entrances. Okay, the tiga tempat masuk. Uh, sekarang di block. Jadi cuma yang bisa masuk adalah oh, there's one entrance for the faculty and staff and student and there's another one entrance for uh, patient only. Okay? The one on the left side itu adalah entrance for faculty and staff. Okay? As you can see here every time you come there's a question and then you have to answer no and after that they're going to check your temperature. Okay? So now they, there's another one that there's a new policy also starting last week. I forgot to take the, the new picture. So starting next week, starting last week, every time you enter you have to swap your card. Okay? As a faculty and student. So now, now they can register your uh, presence in the in the school. Whereas the one on the right side itu adalah entrance untuk uh, patient. Okay, di mana pada waktu pasien datang, kemudian ditanyakan mengenai apakah mengenai gejala-gejala. This is the first uh, checking point, the first screening point, and then after that we check their temperature, and then after we direct them to the clinic wherever uh, they, they need to go to. For the elevator itself, you know, we we put out of signs, you know, in front of the elevator, you know, social distancing is not, you know, that is this required. So basically, we put many signs, okay, to educate the the patients and then also the faculty too. Uh, also, it's the same thing, you know, inside the building, inside, inside the elevator, you put signs here, you know, so people has to go to the corner. And then the one on the right side, you know, instruction about, you know, you have to, you have to uh, cover yourself uh, when you enter the building, you know, when you cough, what you need to do, and, you know, and then also how do you disinfect your hands, disinfect your hands also. Uh, we do have a couple uh, stairs. So we put, you know, so we control the, the traffic. Uh, we minimize people from, you know, passing through. So, for example, one entrance is only for up only, and the other one is for down only. Okay, so I think there are, uh, we have one, I think we, should, we, we do have a six or six stairways. Okay, so everyone has to follow this. Okay. And then this is for the, the way we perform, you know, we manage the clinic, preclinical. Okay, so we put X so that people, you know, they don't have, they, they shouldn't uh, sit in that, uh, the one with the X sign and also the one on the right side you know we you know for social distancing we close on you know the mannequin so we make a uh, space between one student to another students okay and this is our lecture room uh you know again we try to minimize people to be you know to uh to be here uh you know so we block the the chairs we uh, you know we provide you know we try to keep social distancing here it's the same thing with the one on the right side previously there should be a lot of our chairs but now you know we try to minimize it and then this is our uh, uh, students' uh, lounge. Okay, so before you know, there's this, there are so, uh, many sofas everywhere, and now you know we try to minimize it. Although, as you can see here, you know the, the chair actually they are facing each other. However, they're still you know six far, six feet apart. Okay, so if you want to make you know this kind of situation, this kind of situation, it has to be six feet apart. And the one on the right side, before there previously, there will be you know student has a lot of computers on the right side, on the uh, the tembok-tembok itu sekarang komputer-komputer juga di, dihilangkan, diminimize. 
uh, we put a lot of signs and then we put a lot of uh, again disinfectant you know around the touch uh, touching area for example mini orang buka pintu kemudian setelah itu dia langsung bisa cuci tangan lagi okay so this this is the way we control uh, the 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 building and also the administrative here okay and then uh, all the payments okay all the payments now everything uh, we encourage everything to be done uh, cashless uh we do not we strongly encourage the students uh, the patients not to pay with cash and then they also can perform uh with a credit card over the phone you know from home uh you know and so forth okay so uh, i don't know if this one can be performed in the clinic in, in indonesia or not but this is the way we do it so everything is you know we encourage everything to be to be uh, cashless okay and then this is the one uh the left side is the for example is waiting room for oh, ortho Okay, ortho department here. Uh, you can see here we put a lot of tapes and then you know try to keep social distancing. And then the one on the right side is the uh, waiting room for the prosto, uh, for a PG pros, uh, for a postdoc prosto. Before there was a lot of uh, chairs. Now we try to minimize it. Okay, and also uh, this is for pediatrics, uh, Saint Pediatrics Clinic. <clears throat> Usually, uh, most of our patients they are Mexicans, and when you know pre previously when they come, you know one one. Uh, uh, the, the kids is the patient you know the whole family the father mother the grandma grandpa they usually come okay to you know that's that is uh, their culture but now we told them okay so one student uh, one, one patient and then one parent only okay so the same thing with the right side right side is our pg pros uh, waiting area you can see here we put a lot of uh, marks so that people will do uh, social distancing and the maximum capacity we put a lot of signs Okay, so you know this is how many people that you know that, that can enter here. Uh, if you want to use it for a meeting, how many? Uh, what is the maximum capacity of this room? We try to make it into uh, forty percent or to forty to fifty percent of the previous capacity. Before the student enter the clinic, they need to uh, uh, get calibrated. Not only the student, okay, the faculty and the staff, uh, they need to be calibrated. Okay, they need to take this online uh, calibration methods. Uh, tools, uh, you know, so they have to listen, they have to listen to the PowerPoint and after they have to take the test and they have to pass before they were allowed to the to enter the clinic. And then for the clinic, they have to be paired, uh, you know, there's always uh, faculty and, and uh, staff or faculty and faculty, this is for PG, so usually uh, PG is a faculty and the staff, but for the pre-doc, we always pair the pre-doc, uh, the senior, the third year, the fourth year with the third year, okay? We always pair them so that, you know, so that they can uh, work together. Okay, and then this is one way to, uh, for the pre-clinic, this is one way we organize it. Uh, we make a group, uh, you know, a group of seven, uh, seven or eight with one uh, faculty member and they have to stay for two weeks. Uh, you know, this is the this is normal for during a pandemic situation. So just in case if one pay, you know if one is uh, there's an outbreak, the whole group will have to be quarantined. Okay, so it's easier for us to know that uh, to to know who who uh, who are in the groups. For the screening, uh, you know, we we perform a couple you know couple things uh, you know couple ways. Okay, and the first one is of course you know screening through the phone, style dentistry. We're gonna ask about their medical history, blah blah blah. You know we are going to have have you ever contact with the with the COVID patients? And after that we you know there's a when they enter the building, they they can, we're gonna ask again. And then when they enter the clinic, we're gonna ask the same thing again. Okay. And then uh, tele dentistry. This is a uh, so, you know a slide from seminar uh, from a ADA American Dental Association, and they have shown that actually tele dentistry actually can reduce is well first of all it's increasing over time. Okay, uh, during for, for this COVID. However, actually this one actually reduced the unnecessary appointment uh, for you know for for the patients to come to see you. Okay, for example, you know they they will say oh, this is emergency. Actually, it's not emergency. Okay, so that we can reduce the amount of people that come to the clinic. Uh, again, you know, so I just want to show you this picture again because uh, now when the patients come to the, our clinic, we have to do we have to uh, check the double check with their body temperature and they have to wash their hands and then they have to before they before we sit them into our clinic. And then uh, you know when they sit. The student has to ask this kind of question. This is a COVID screening uh, questions. Okay, so you know you have you uh, uh, have you 
have you or the individual accompanying you experienced any of the following sign okay uh, you know cough blah 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 that you know any any of the COVID signs okay and they have to enter it and they cannot enter their, their treatment notes if they don't do this okay so we force them to to do this because otherwise they will not be able to enter their treatment notes okay so this is this is the way we uh, uh, organize our clinic okay so as you can see here you know it to other pot side to it to you know in the morning so we we have a uh, four sessions okay so from 8 30 until 10 30 10 30 until 12 30 and then 1 30 until 3 30 3 30 until 5 30. so uh from one session to another session they're gonna they're gonna move okay for for example in the morning uh pot one restoration and then uh second session they're gonna move to the right okay the third session and then they're gonna move to the black to, to the left and then the fourth and they're gonna move to the right okay and then there's always empty session, empty chairs between so to to do social distancing and then uh, the way we allow the students to, the, you know, regarding the, the, the treatment that we are doing, uh, we are we are following the guidelines from the Department of Public Health, uh, you know, the state of Illinois. Di mana di sini adalah kita menggunakan ada phase one, okay? Phase one, uh, low risk aerosol, moderate risk, and then high risk of aerosol. So during the first of uh, June, bulan Juni, kita hanya melakukan perawatan yang uh, yang hijau. Saat ini Julai kita melakukan perawatan yang biru. Nanti setelah bulan August or mid of August, we are going to start treating the patients for the untuk perawatan the one with the the, the red arrows. Why? I think this is a very uh, good thing to do. Karena pada waktu kemarin kita baru memulai uh, klinik, you know, we are, you know, we've been, you know, we we work from home. We've been working from home for two, three months. Okay. Jadi pada waktu masuk ini kita semua kaget, you know, how how to do this. The student they forgot how to how to do the this you know con the disinfection control. Uh, you know, they forgot to put their uh, N95. They forgot to put their face shield and so forth. Okay. So I think this is a good time, you know, for for people to get a, a, a get used to it, get adjusted to the to the new normal. Also, uh, you know, study have shown that uh, you know that you with uh, concentration of the uh, 0.5 percent of the povidone iodine as an oral antiseptic, actually, you know, you can ask the patients to rinse for 15 minutes, and then you know, actually, it's gonna kill the virus. Okay. And the protocol uh, in our school is we gonna uh, we ask them with the uh, with the hydrogen peroxide, you know, uh, one percent, uh, one to one percent to 1.5 percent. Uh, rinse for 30 seconds. Okay, so that's because povidone iodine is, is not really common in the uh, in the in the U.S. Okay, so uh, hydrogen percent is more common. Okay, now let's talk about PPE. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of uh, you know this information all all over the clinic, and then before you start in the clinic, actually, you know, one month ago, we have to show we have to show that there's a uh, a sheet where you have to show that you can do you know how to do doffing and donning. Okay, and and after you after you know how to do it, and then you can uh, you can you know, and then you can enter the clinic. Okay, this is just uh, you know, it's a from previous study. Uh, you know, as you can see here, you know, uh, you know, on the mask, if you use a 95 or or a surgical mask, you know, the COVID will stay, uh, the the virus will stay on the outer layer. You know, uh, you know, uh, day four until day four. And after that, they are they are gone. Okay, and for the inner layer, they're only going to stay for around three days. Okay, so and then this one is just the way we do our PPE here. Uh, you know, so we everyone has to use uh, if they are you know mostly at ninety five, and then and then we cover with the surgical mask and then with the face shield. Then then that's the standard uh, that we use of in our clinic. Uh, you know, this is just to remind you. You know, for when you use N95, make sure that you don't have a, a facial hair because it's going to jeopardize, uh, you know, the function or the seal uh, of your N95. Uh, kemudian, ini juga this is the way we use it. Okay, so uh, this uh, surgical mask on the outside, and then this is just you know the one way to preserve your N95 or K95. Adalah anda ada mempunyai lima lima kemudian anda memakai misalnya hari senin itu anda memakai yang nomor satu selasa nomor dua selasa rabu nomor tiga jumat kamis dan kamis nomor empat jumat itu nomor lima kemudian hari senin itu hari senin berikutnya anda menggunakan lagi nomor satu oke okay? why because after four days the the, the virus gonna gonna die oke okay, this is the way uh, you know i uh, ppe that we use in our clinic oke okay, so uh, and then uh, this uh, student, you know, when you know when they enter the clinic, they're gonna receive this brown bag. Okay, what's inside the brown bag is one they're gonna use. Uh, we have one uh, 
uh, N95 and then one face shield. So every month uh, our school has to provide 6,000 masks, including N95 and also surgical masks. Okay, 6,000 masks per month. That's a lot of masks. Okay, that, that they have to provide. Okay, and then this is for this is the way they work in our clinic in the implant clinic. Uh, we have we, again we pair them with the uh, senior and the junior, and then the senior is the the main provider and the junior is the is the a co-provider. So I told my students, so this, the senior one, uh, the main provider is the, the, the dirty one, and then the co-provider is the not so dirty person. So they are, they, their job is to open the drawer, you know, to get all the instruments, you know, if, 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 they, if they have to get some, to get all the, you know, light cure, you know, blah, 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 something, all the materials that's needed. Okay, so, um, and then we also uh, hide all the, mask all the gloves you know in the in the uh, in the cabinet so that they won't get exposed to the uh, to the aerosol okay so this is uh, you know and then this is the you know the new publication how to preserve uh, your n95 okay so you know to in summary uh, there are many ways to do it okay so i know in indonesia you know even in in the us is now is getting very expensive before it was only one dollar now it's eight dollars a piece Okay, for the N95. So, a uh, couple methods, you know, based on the paper. The paper actually was written by Dr. Peter Sai. He's the inventor of N95. Okay, so you know you can rotate, rotate it as I mentioned before. Uh, you know, and then filter efficiency is still 100%. Okay, or you what you can do, you can uh, dry heat uh, 70 degree for 60 minutes, uh, and then it's going to filter efficiency is going to become 98.5%. Uh, and then you can also boil it for five minutes. Okay. However, the filter efficiency is going to become 92%, or you can steam clean it. Okay, and it's not recommended for you to use soap, you know, water or alcohol, wipe it with alcohol because it's going to degrade the the material. Okay, this is another study actually following the uh, Peter size uh, study. This is more comprehensive because and also this is NIH funded. Uh, as you can see here, you know, you can see the one uh, the the on the top. Okay, the top one. Uh, you know, the vertical line is the number of uh, the title of the virus, and then the horizontal one is the minutes. Okay, so the the more the the lower the minutes, that's the better. Okay, so as you can see here from the from the top of figures, uh, VHP is the best one. Okay, and then the second the second one is the mass integrity. Okay, is you know how whether it's getting better. So this is a summary. VHP is the best one, and then it also can maintain the integrity. And then followed by use by UV. And then ethanol is not recommended. Okay. And then N95 respirators can be recommended and reused uh, for up to three times and up to two times, you know, for the dry heat. And then this is just you know another you know from uh, from another school, another protocol, how to do when you do uh, aerosol generating protocol uh, procedures, you know, when you know what kind of uh, uh, mass that you have to use. And then this is the same thing. Okay, and then uh, recently, uh, this is you know my last two slides. Uh, recently, you know there was a, a little bit drama here from the UCLA, uh, di mana di uh, you know this is masuk sekolah apa Daily Bruins, which is our their uh, newspaper. Okay, uh, dia menunjukkan bahwa ada yang banyak yang protes. UCLA School of Dentistry fails to implement many COVID mitigating uh, practice, and then one of the protests itu adalah communications. There's you know there hardly communications between the leadership and the student and the staff. Okay, so you know we should have a. You know, I strongly recommend to have a very you know a good intimate communications between the leadership. The faculty and the staff, and also the student. The, you know, particularly the student. They are the student. They are uh, confused. Uh, you know about their study, about their requirement, and that you know. And then there's always should be a positive encouragement about from the leadership. You know that they that everything's going to be okay. You know, we usually have this kind of a uh, we call it town hall meeting. We usually have it maybe uh, you know twice a week. Okay, at least twice a week with the students because we have first first year, second year, fourth year, and fifth year, uh, and then third year and fourth year, right? So we we take turns. Okay. Okay, I think that will be my last presentations. Uh, you know, this is my email, and then this, that's my numbers. If you need to contact me, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Cortino, for sharing your experiences and giving us a new uh, information of the what is happening there in Illinois. So, uh, for those who 
For those who have a questions, please fill down the Q&A box below and we will answer the questions after all presentation done. And now we go into the second presentation. Is Professor Suchi. Uh, I will read a brief of his uh, slide, please. Professor Suchi. Uh, well, Chulalongkorn University and DDS from Chulalongkorn University and also graduation diploma clinical sciences in operative dentistry from Chulalongkorn University. And he got master science, master science dental in the university. Also, he got the PhD from University of Sydney. Mini MBA in health Chulalongkorn University and diploma high board of operative dentistry. And Professor Suchit Tong, it's your please. Thank you very much. And uh, Indonesian Association of the Faculty, Dental Faculty, and also uh, speakers and also dear colleagues and friends. Uh, um, I would like to first of all thank uh, Professor Iri to invite me to join the uh, you know the this session because it's very important now to share you know our knowledge to fight the COVID. I think we suffer a lot in the, you know in the last few months, but anyway we have to live with it for very long. So actually you know uh, I'm from Chulalongkorn University and we planned last year to have a celebration for our 80th anniversary, but it never happened due to you know no one can travel so we cannot do anything much, only everything in virtual. And uh, so today, I think, I think it's a good time, you know, for us uh, from um, many places around the world to share what you have done so far and what is your problem, something like that, and we can learn from each other and to improve our clinic. So in, in my talk, I will talk about just uh, uh, mostly focus on the changes in dental practice in my school and the new ways of learning and assessment for the students of students. Also the new requirement for the dental education. As you may know, you know, uh, our school never closed, you know, even uh, we have a, a outbreak we, we still open our department uh, and find some, you know, ask some volunteer, you know, to do urgency and emergency treatment. But, you know, I think perhaps uh, we, we leave about 50 person in the school and we have 10 teams all together. Like uh, this is the first team on Monday and the second team on Tuesday. And we had the experience of two COVID patients to come to our school. Even, you know, we, we are in a newspaper already because, uh, you know, they just uh, say, oh, Chulalongkorn University got the COVID patient, something like that. But anyway, all of the, you know, the, the suspect uh, involved people uh, with those uh, COVID patient, uh, we all check them for the test and about uh, almost uh, 24 people at the time, no one got a positive test. So we still survive. So I want to talk about the change and mostly in the context about the droplet and about the, you know, airborne. First of all, the context. I think we, 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 we uh, have been doing well as a dentist, but anyway, we had added something more, uh, you know, for additional protection for us. For example, in the past, we, we just wear gown, but now we, we wear more like uh, we have PPE to wear the uh, uh, water protected, uh, isolated crown, something like that. Sometimes we call cover all in Thailand. And we, we have done so far is eliminate all unnecessary equipment. You know, in the past, we put everything on you know, the, the, the counter, the table, whatever, even the, on the unit. But now we try to eliminate everything out in order to, you know, to clean it very, uh, we can clean it completely. And also be also the extremely careful in the disposal of the contaminated equipment because, uh, you know, every day we have a lot of infected waste now. In the past, we don't have many PPE to use each day, but now we have plenty of garbage 
to be removed every day. And we ask the patient to concentrate more on you know, cleaning the hand and we concentrate more on cleaning everything that patient and faculty staff touch before they enter the room and when they, they walk or whatever and ask patient to wear masks all the time until uh, they will get that treatment. In Thailand, you know, uh, they, they survey about 94%, they wear masks all the time, you know, everywhere. So, so it's pretty good for us to, you know, to, to prevent the, the outbreak because everybody wear masks. And uh, the, for the dog collector, in the past, we didn't wear goggle much, but now we started to wear goggle more and more. Uh, and especially uh, this possible cover avoiding the surface contamination, uh, as I told you before. And also we ask the patient to follow the respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. We have to check, uh, we have to screen them very well. And we use more and more of them, you know, even uh, some small cares and you know, some uh, little things we use all rubber dam in order to control the aerosols. That's what we changed so far. But something that's good already, for example, we have been using fetch you for very long, so we still use it. For the airborne, unfortunately, we don't have N95 much because it's not because it's expensive, but uh, we cannot find them, you know. Uh, they're all in the dark market, very difficult to find. So far, still we couldn't get many of them, but uh, we just got the grant from the government to buy the N95. But anyway, we couldn't find, we couldn't buy it so far. So we, we have to try more because it's very difficult. And uh, so far we still use just surgical masks. So we have to be very careful. And uh, what is new is that we ask the patient to rinse uh, their mouth, but uh, we didn't use this one. We use mostly uh, povidone iodine. Uh, for the patient at least one minute before uh, they open the mouth. And we also have a guideline for our faculty staff whether if, if you <clears throat> work on a zone that uh, we, we don't have aerosol such as you, you stitch off or you, you do something just or examine something like that, uh, we will wear a gown like this uh, without N95 because we don't have many N95 so far. We don't need a shoe cover or whatever. And then if uh, we suspect or we have to do something that have, uh, can produce the aerosols. We ask them to put the N95 so we can you know, save uh, N95 for our staff and student. And also uh, we have some, something a little bit more than uh, what we done in you know, the, the zone that we don't have aerosols. So of course uh, we, we do uh, temperature measurement. In the past, we, we, never, we never do it. You know, and, and also we have some of the EOS in which uh, we, we try to buy more, but people suspect that uh, how can you clean, you know, the pipeline, you know, the, this one inside. And how, how do you know that it's totally clean when, you know, the, the, you have, uh, you finish the job, something like that. And some of them, you know, uh, uh, invent this one like a shield to protect when you do a, a operation here, you know, at least you protect the aerosol to, to go straight to you. Uh, they have also face shield and also the protection here. So this is the, uh, the guideline, you know, we, we have, a, of course, uh, we have border, body temperature measurement. And the second one is, uh, we, we never used this one before, is uh, like a questionnaire for the risk assessment of the patient who will come to the school uh, to see whether, you know, we, we have to check with them whether they are in a high risk group or they, they are low risk group. So if they are low risk, please come, you know, and we, and we treat them. But if they are in a high risk group, uh, we have to check or we have to do something else rather than asking them to come right away. And of course, you know, uh, the important thing is the mouth rinse before the dental procedure which uh, we just started when we have an outbreak. In the past, we didn't do it. We have more rubber dam isolation and we use hand instrument more and more. In the past, we always uh, use a P10, you know, to remove the calculus, something like that. But now we uh, intend to use more on hand instrument in order to reduce the aerosols. And also we concentrate on the high power suction very much. Before we start our clinic, you know, uh, we check out that uh, they, you know, they can be used efficiently before uh, we start the clinic. And we also use the 
of course, the anti-retraction handpiece, we use it for a long time, and we regularly disinfect all public areas. In the past, we, we did it, but now today we ask the cleaner to do it every 30 minutes and every place we suspect uh, people to touch. And we also change you know, many gates to be the automatic door so rather than you know you have to uh, use your hand or you have to press. So it's just all automatic in order to you know, re reduce the, the, the people to touch uh, everything to transmit the infection. And the standard disinfection and sterilization for the dental clinic that uh, we train everybody, you know, now you have to do something like this in the past, you know, when, when we finish one patient, the other patient just come in and then sit. But now we have to wait uh, uh, in the guideline, they said 15 minutes, but you know, in the reality, sometimes 15 minutes is very long, but maybe just uh, 10 minutes uh, that's long enough because we need time to clean everything and we need uh, some ventilation to, to get to the fresh air in to dilute the infected air in case we have it in the room, something like that. So this is a major change that we have done. And just uh, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we had a, a webinar like uh, this, but we asked you know, our faculty alumni who, you know, who stay around the world. So, so we select from five countries and also from Thailand, so six countries to share what you have done in your dental school, uh, in like in Hong Kong, in Japan, in US, in UK and in Switzerland. We have two of our alumni, uh, they, they work as a faculty staff in Hong Kong and in, in Indiana University. Yeah, we have uh, many of our staff, you know, who study OCs in one in Tohoku and one in Dundee in UK, and one in the USC in, in, in USA, and one in Zurich in Switzerland. And we all share about what you do there in your dental school. So we, we, we just, you know, uh, share the knowledge. And we found that uh, for the situation in Thailand, I think we, we are pretty good compared to others. And also Hong Kong is also very good. We have fully 3,000 uh, patients infected now. And just recently, yesterday, we, we had 10, but all of them uh, came from overseas. But we have no infected patient within the country for 60 days already. So we have to do it well to control that one. And we have a death rate of about 1.7%. But uh, you know, uh, our people is very panicked and strictly following the rule. Like I, I told you about 94% wear masks all the time, you know, everywhere. Even sometimes you, you stay in their, uh, you know, their car, their, their house, whatever, they all wear masks because they're ripping. And, and just last week, uh, we have a, a foreigner, uh, somehow they, they, you know, they left the state quarantine and went to the, you know, the, the uh, shopping mall in one of the, tourist place. So, you know, everybody canceled, you know, the hotel in that uh, tourist place. And, you know, we have a problem a lot for the, our economics because we already panicked, even though just one people walk in uh, and, and they actually, they are the government guests. So they don't strictly control them like others. So they have a, uh, uh, like a, they have a, somehow they can walk out from the quarantine uh, place that's not quite good, but anyway, now we control more and more. But anyhow, you know, uh, from our group discussion from six countries uh, in Europe and in the US, uh, 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 I, I think the, in Europe they, they have a very high death rate compared to others. And the Hong Kong is done very well, you know, very low rate of uh, death. But uh, for the awareness of the people, it's very very, especially in the US, you know, it's very, they, they worry well, some people very, you know, worry about this, but some people, they don't care much. But uh, unlike in Hong Kong and in, in Thailand, we, we are very worried. For the screening, you know, we never used the online screening before, but when we had outbreak, you know, in, in March, I think I remember, so no one can come to school directly. They have to uh, contact us online first and we will scan, screen them, you know, like, uh, if it's like you said, uh, like it's unnecessary appointment, don't allow them to come to our school. But at that time when we had outbreak, we, as I told you, we just opened uh, about maybe just 
less than 20 dental units to operate for urgency and emergency treatment only. But for the elective case, we ask them to, uh, we postpone them to, you know, we cannot tell them when, but we all postpone. So at that time, we have just allowed 50 uh, uh, faculty uh, people who work in the dental school, very quiet. And it's, a, it's like our 80 anniversary is very quiet, very, really, very quiet. And, and as you know, in Bangkok, a lot of people walk everywhere, but now it's like a ghost town, something like that at that time in March. But of course we have on-site screening and we very tough to screen all of them. And we ask them to sign because someone, they want to have their treatment and they don't tell the truth. So we have to ask them to sign. But if you said you never been to uh, uh, other country uh, in the last week or something like that, but uh, if they don't tell us, uh, we can sue them afterwards, something like that. And we started to have a fever measurement uh, since about late uh, February and March. We, in the past, we used uh, like a gun, you know, but now we use uh, like an automatic uh, screen. When uh, one time, one day, you know, I, I walked in and I couldn't enter, they complained because I forgot to wear a mask. Somehow I, I just dropped my mask on, you know, my chest and I forgot the, 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 the machine can detect and say, no, you cannot enter. That's very good. And uh, for the COVID test for patient, we, we never do it. But you know, in, in uh, I just heard from Hong Kong, that's the only place, you know, uh, from six uh, country that we discussed uh, last two weeks, I told you, uh, Hong Kong is the only one place that they test the COVID for faculty staff and student every week by spit, you know, spit the saliva out and, and check the, uh, uh, PCR, I think. Every week they said they have to spit and check uh, in order to control. It costs a lot, I'm sure. But uh, the other thing is uh, this infecting spray room. We, you know, in Thailand, sometimes you enter some department store, you have to go to one room and they will spray some chemical to kill, you know, the, to kill the germs on your claw, something like that. We, we're thinking about that to do something like that, but uh, we don't have it yet and no one has it so far. But anyway, for, for this one, uh, I'm quite impressed for the Hong Kong that they uh, check the COVID test for their faculty staff and uh, their student every week. You know, uh, just last month, uh, our university said we should check all of our faculty staff. So, so we send 460 of our, our staff, you know, to, to, uh, to swap for the COVID. But somehow for the whole university, 2000 uh, staff uh, has been swapped and they found nothing. So the, the university said, oh, we waste a lot of money, so we give up. So I think just half of our people, you know, can have a swap to test for the COVID test and they're all negative no one positive at all. For the, uh, yes, I just mentioned you, that we have some of our faculty staff at the Hong Kong, they have all of them and every week, that's very good, but it's very costly. And we have our insurance for all people, staff uh, and, you know, student who has contact with the patient, but for the back office, we didn't pay uh, for the insurance for them. For the PPE, you know, we, we started to use scrub, uh, cross, and you know, we use cover all a lot more and more. Now we every every you know every evening we have a lot of infectious uh, waste, you know, to put on a rubbish bin, something like that. It's not so good. And of course, uh, all of the dental school around the world that uh, we have discussed so far, you know, they all have a training prior to you know for the student to enter the clinic. And even I heard from UK, I think uh, they said in Scotland, you know, they, they even have some referee. Uh, whoever want to start, uh, you know, the dental clinic, they will send uh, uh, some, some people to inspect whether it's good enough uh, to, to start uh, the business or not. But in Thailand, we don't have it. Whoever think uh, we good enough to open, uh, yeah, uh, they, they can do it uh, and they have to uh, protect themselves. And so the significant change in the clinical practice in our dental school is in the past, you know, our students treat patients without assistance.
but now we have no choice because you know if uh, they don't have assistance, no one will you know uh, do a suction for them. Uh, and so what we have to do is to pair students. Now today, you know, uh, we have less time for the student to practice because you know, they have to pair and one to be assistant, one to be the operator. That is uh, our problem now so far. And we have discussed in all the dental school in Thailand that we have no choice to do this. That we try to do, you know, training more efficiently in order to get uh, the minimum requirement that the dental course will require for our student to be graduated. So in, in, in you know, we discussed that only, I think uh, many, many, many dental school have the same thing like uh, in Thailand, we, in our school, we divided into four zones. One is non aerosol zone, such as stitch off or, you know, examine something like that examination only, and the lowest aerosol zone, such as, you know, you have uh, endodontics to put a rubber dam on, or you have some something that is not so you know, aggressive. But the high-risk aerosol zone means like uh, operative and, you know, uh, crowd preparation or those things, impaction or whatever. And the, finally, the fourth one is the uh, uh, infected patient zone. We have uh, like a room, negative pressure room, you know, to treat a patient with the suspect infectious uh, disease, something that like TB or whatever, something like that. So, so it asks will be divided into four zones. And in the past, we just mixed them in the first three zones, but now we split them into three zones already. But the problem is we haven't done much on, you know, the, the change of the, the physical of the clinic because uh, uh, you, you need some time, you know, you need money and you need some time to uh, design what the best for our clinic. So I think I think in a few months we will finish everything. But before we finish everything, we have done a lot of things already. Very sorry about that. But be very careful about the uh, spreading of the infection. So for the main infection protection, we decide in our school to have a good ventilation of uh, 12 uh, air change per hour at least. So at least we have to bring fresh air in for six uh, air change per hour and we do a recirculation with the HEPA, you know, inside the clinic for another six air change per hour. In that case, you know, uh, we will have a diluted infected air in case that, you know, not necessarily or not only the COVID-19 if we cannot detect or screen them, but, you know, everything influenza or whatever when people patient come to the clinic, yeah, we, we have a good ventilation that will be good for uh, our staff and our patients as well. And very concentrate on HVAC, high power suction. If they work properly, it will be very safe for everybody. And one more thing that we have a concern and we try to do it is the airflow direction. Now we try to construct, you know, like the pipeline to, to, to push the fresh air on the head of the operator. And, you know, we have a, local exhaust to suck the air at the feet of the patient. So in that case, the flow of the air will, will go from, you know, uh, the head of the dentist and then through the head of the patient and then to the body of the patient, to the feet of the patient and then to the local exhaust. We, uh, the air, infected air will not return back to the operator and assistant that we expect. So this is the main infection protection that we prepare money to do it, uh, you know, from now on. I think we've seen everything in uh, three months, something like that. And, and for the additional one, as we don't have those physical improvement at the moment, we use some ion bombardment such as uh, plasma uh, in the air conditioning system, something like that, UV, uh, upper level zone and ozone sometimes, very dangerous, so you have to be careful. And we bought a lot of air purifier with HEPA in which we feel comfortable, but we not quite sure whether it helps us a lot or not. And of course we have, we just bought about 25 EOS to provide to every clinic, but uh, most of the people complain that it's very noisy, you know, some people even put their ear plug uh, while they, they do the operations. So we, we do not buy any more EOS because we doubt about the how to clean inside the pipe 
uh, the suction pipe, something like that for the clinic and dental unit improvement. So far, we have two clinics done completely out of 18 clinics. So that means 36 of 455 units we had. And we plan to finish it within three months for the 200 something because uh, some of them we, we think that uh, it's not necessary to have, you know, the fresh air blow on the head and the local exhaust to suck uh, air from the feet, something like that. So we, we don't raise much money for that. It costs a lot, it's about 500, half a million US dollar for all together. Pretty, uh, pretty big money for us. And the last one, we, we started to construct a AIIR, airborne infection isolation rule in which, you know, there we have everything I, I tell you later. And for the, the very significant uh, change of the dental procedure is uh, we ask everybody, uh, every student to wear rubber dam if they can, we put rubber dam if they can do it, if they cannot do it, so that, that's, that's the things. We bought a lot of easy prep for the people, you know, to block, uh, to reduce the aerosol from the mouth. And we use our four hands uh, and they ask their classmates to be assistant. So in that case, the student will be saved, the operator will be saved from the aerosol also the patient because they have one of their friends to suck out the aerosol out from the field of the operation. And of course, uh, we have physical distancing everywhere in the elevator, you know, uh, uh, also the, the waiting area, which uh, we find a lot of difficulty, even though, you know, uh, we ask not to come a lot for one patient, but anyway, we have a lot of patient each day. So sometimes, even though we, don't provide chairs for them to sit. They stand. It's very difficult to, you know, to, to stop them. Yeah. And we ask everybody to have more cleaning time before the new patient for 15 minutes. But you know, in reality, we cannot control sometimes 10 minutes they ask the new patient to sit already. Uh, so all the school, you know, in around the world, they, they are pretty much the same. And they start to concentrate on four hands. They have more, you know, on rubber dam, something like that. So after we discussed and we found pretty much the same. This is the example of what we did in our dental school, you know. Uh, uh, our clinic, you know, we, we have uh, two types mostly. Some clinic, they have their own private room like this. Some clinic, they don't have, they have an open space, you know. For the private room, you know, we just all close the door and we, you know, we remove the glass uh, block glass here, you know, and then we put a, a space, uh, you know, for the air to flow in. And at the end of the, you know, the, the, the dental chair, we put the local exhaust here. So that's mean, you know, this is the air conditioner we call OAU, outside air conditioning unit, will blow the fresh air in to, you know, otherwise the air conditioner room, air conditioner in the, the clinic, uh, we work very hard, too much for them. So we need to uh, fill in the fresh air here and push the fresh air inside the clinic. And then once we have a local exhaust, this is one. This is a mortar to suck the air, you know, from the dental clinic here and, and blow out. We have a HEPA filter here uh, to protect, you know, some people who walk around this area. So in that case, if you come back, you will see this one will be, the air will be sucked out by that mortar, you know, to, to blow out. And then we have to uh, fill in the fresh air here. It costs a lot for, you know, uh, one clinic. Uh, that's for the, the private room. But for the, you know, for the, the room without the, for the unit without the private room, again, we add the OAU outside air conditioning unit outside here. And, push the fresh air in and we suck the air out like this. So if you go to, you will see, you know, on the top of the operator head, you know, here, we have a blow out uh, the fresh air from this one. And then at the feet of the patient, we have a local exhaust here. And also we have a air purifier to help, you know, recirculate the ventilation inside the clinic because this is a, it's a, a private room, you know, it connects to each other. So that's the idea that we have done so far. This is a mortar to pull out the, the, the air and then, you know, blow out. And this is the last one that we have, I think within about a few months or so, 
uh, a negative pressure room with the air quality and quantity control and humidity control, temperature control, airflow direction and transport of infection patient in case there another second wave or you know outbreak. And they have a lot of uh, patients who we suspect they can be you know, uh, infected by COVID or whatever, we will send them to do a treatment in this room. So that, that is a change uh, in the clinic. And now I, I'll talk about the change in the learning and assessment a little bit that, of course, we all do online teaching so far. You know, uh, It's not difficult, something like this. Uh, the university provide other system uh, to do online teaching. But the difficult thing is online examination system. We also do it, but uh, we cannot control much as do, you may know. So that's why you know we, we have to uh, trust on students that they will not talk to each other or something like that. And the new requirements for the dental education is you know those simulation uh, augment reality, uh, virtual reality that uh, we should consider to be used in our dental curriculum to help the, you know, to develop the student to get less contact on patient, but more on the virtual things. And the number of studies have, uh, you know, show that this thing improve, uh, you know, the student potential practice skill very well. This is the example, like the MOOC, or, you know, you have CDS, then SIM, or even the CAD CAM. So this thing will help you quite a lot. And the last one is, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we move uh, to use uh, mostly for the uh, online teaching. So as a dentistry, it is a profession that requires a high level of human interaction. A social distancing is still in place in online. Virtual interaction is growing. Therefore, it's crucial for our dental educator must ensure that students still can develop, maintain personal and interprofessional skill. That's very important. We didn't train the robot to treat the patient in the future. So we train humans. So we have to add this thing on because the online, you know, uh, now online system come a lot. So, so they change their habit. And this is the, you know, online examination is very difficult to control. Cheating and plagiarism is inevitable when online assessment is implemented. Therefore, dental indicator must help students to develop their honesty their trustworthiness and also their fair practice. And you know, keep telling them every day, every day. That, yeah, and, and we can do it mostly online. So, okay, I think, I think it's a, uh, just my worry is about, you know, now we have a lot more of the infectious ways, you know, to, 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 to remove every day from the faculty. And we spend a lot of money, that means more costs on our practice. And we don't have enough space because you do a space thing. How can we have a big more you know, space uh, of clinic? And how can you construct a new space for the patient? How can you waste one dental chair? Uh, if you have, you know, for example, if you have four dental chairs, you can use only two dental chairs. And we don't have enough working uh, you know, operating time for the student now because they pair and they help each other. We have to solve that problem. We have to improve uh, how to, you know, to uh, help them, you know, to have more experience in, you know, limited of time. That is uh, our problem. I would, I would like to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Suchit, for sharing your experience. It's a new perspective of us for the knowing the clinical education in your faculty. And also we would like to uh, congratulate for your faculty for the celebration for the 80 in this year's. Yeah, a, a silent anniversary. Yeah. Uh, those, I would like to remember again for our participants to give a Q&A for the below. Uh, and we already, we continue the uh, answering if the third session already finished. So now we will go into the last presentation to the to hear for the expert in clinical education, special from the Professor Hosna. I would like to read a brief curriculum vitae for the Professor 
Opa Foot Marsa University, Marsa University since December 2016. Or uh, he was a uh, uh, former dean in University of Malaya. She has intensive research experience in oral potentially malignant oral cancer. She has developed and trained identity in clinical oral visual examination for early detection of oral cancer. And also she is the creation for oral facial disease, new the past president of the Asian Society of Oral Cancer. Professor Rosna. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. It, it, it seems to be. Okay, I will try and share. And first of all, thank you very much to um, the organizing committee and to Prof. Ari um, and uh, Dr. Nina and also. Um, Dr. Muhammad Ruslin uh, for you know having me here and um, nice to know uh, our two speakers and you have made it real easy for me. Uh, I have a very simple presentation and but I will be referring to most of the things uh, that some of you, uh, that you have mentioned. Uh, so I will try and share my presentation now. This is the correct one. Okay, you can see that. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's just that this panel is hiding my. I'm trying to put it on. Uh, you can minimize. You can minimize the panel. Yeah, I'm trying so to just a, a negative to be a negative. Okay, right now I found it. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. So, um, yes, I have been in uh, Masa University only for the last three and a half years. For the last 35 years, I was in uh, University of Malaya. And um, the uh, COVID situation is a really learning experience for us. And uh, we do not really go into um, things because, because of financial, we are unable to move into things except to, uh, to work on what we have. But what uh, our first simulation uh, COVID-19 case was actually in January 2020. And 18th March, we actually started our um, movement control order. So just briefly that um, this is the latest, I think we have up to 2017. So we have a first wave in January 25th and a second wave in February 27th. And uh, we, we have the first MCO. And during that time, there was an exponential increase. Um, and therefore the MCO was extended to, uh, and later became a control MCO, which is from 31st to June 9th. And as we plateaued, uh, we are into we are into recovering uh, MCO that is from June 10th to August 32. Um, however, uh, as of this week, our single digit um, new cases has started to become uh, uh, two digit. So we are all very worried. But, uh, and I think partly also, um, many, many Malaysians, um, I mean, unlike in Thailand, many Malaysians uh, seem to think that it's okay now. <laughs> so maybe that's one of the reason, but, uh, but we have a government that is rigidly monitoring and introducing all these features. So based on that, um, as when we have the MCO, uh, we shift all our teaching from face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching. It's almost like 100% online teaching at that time, uh, whereas prior to that, it's hardly 
And, but there are very many challenges. Our senior lecturers having difficulty because they need to develop the IT skills. And um, it's, uh, however, this um, online teaching is now enhancing the, the shift from conventional didactic lectures to various innovations in online teaching. That is the good thing that we find that because they have to do online teaching, uh, therefore they have to start to innovate in many ways to ensure student interest. Because I think um, the usual give a lecture, have a recording, I think half the students are not there. And we are to take attendance of the students. And we use both um, the, our platform, the LMS platform, as well as WhatsApp, because there are situations where students um, are unable to get to, because of an instability of the internet, then we communicate um, through WhatsApp and these um, lectures and all that will be um, recorded, they will be able to see it later. But these lectures then become a lot more interactive. So interactive uh, will be using um, either Zoom or we use Google Meet and also um, through WhatsApp. So this we feel is the advantage uh, that we've shifted a lot of our um, focus from purely conventional, which is I think before that is almost like 80% or 90% conventional to almost um, it's 100% during MCO. And now it is still 100% because we do not give any face-to-face uh, -face lectures. And from the 10, June 10 to August 31st, um, there is now the recovery movement control, which is uh, announced by the government. And therefore in July, 2020, the government allowed uh, final year students uh, to be in campus, all those who require special uh, equipment, for example, clinical students or maybe engineering students. So uh, now uh, we started early July and we have 70 more students for our final year students. And, uh, and some students who have limited internet facilities in their areas are allowed to return to campus. And we also, number one, we are very controlled by what the government does. There is, um, well, there is a national council that makes decision. So the Ministry of Health advises the national council and the Ministry of Education makes recommendation, but, prior, but the national council must approve. So it just takes time to get all this approved, but it is uh, now getting to this stage where, um, we got the first group approved. And what does we do as a dean? We only have 13 dental school. So we group together in May in preparation for students to return to campus. Um, the clinical requirements was a problem because of the MCO. Many clinical requirements are not uh, up to it. And students need some level of uh, completion of some clinical requirements in order to take competency tests, in order to take the final exam. Therefore, the Dean's Council developed minimum standards. Uh, no, they, they, they developed uh, minimum, uh, minimal uh, clinical requirements. They modify it, all right? And only for the final year. And also, uh, we sit together and develop minimum standards for prevention of transmission of COVID-19 in the dental clinics. Uh, we do have many, many um, guides. One guide is from the Ministry of Health. Another guide is from Malaysian Dental Association. So, and we also refer to the, the guides from WHO and, inter, and internationally. But when we did this minimum standard, we realized that many of the universities will not be able um, to comply uh, with certain things. And yet we would like to make sure that uh, there are still some minimum standards for prevention of the transmission of COVID-19. And um, we have uh, six uh, public schools and seven private schools. I think the ones who are suffering now is private schools because uh, private schools are very dependent on uh, students being there and on funds that's coming in. Whereas public school, um, most of the time, uh, the government do assist them in this situation, okay? So 
Each university then makes its own guidelines for prevention of transmission of COVID-19 in dental clinics, but based on Dental Dean's Council basic standard. So our challenges is in the aerosol generating procedures and university's preparation is dependent on the facilities and their finances. So um, just looking at the students and campus safety, uh, we in now I'm talking about MASA. Uh, in MASA, um, we have a few entry points. The campus is not an open campus. There are gates all over. We used to come in through one gate uh, and go out the same gate, but they have other gates. So now uh, they have control entry points, students and visitors, staff it go, goes uh, from one gate and students and visitors another and even entry into the building the staff uh, enters um, in from one place and the students and visitors enters from another place and for all staff the entry and recording is through using qr codes and uh, all students and staffs are expected to wear a face mask in campus uh, hand sanitizers are made available at many locations across campus and we actually have a faculty of pharmacy and centralized lab that have started manufacturing hand sanitizers adhering to the guidelines or provided by the WHO. Uh, and um, we, any students or staff that develop signs and symptoms of uh, COVID-19, uh, we will be getting them to seek medical attention. And, uh, and we have social uh, or physical distancing. Uh, with staff seating arrangement at cafeteria and in all areas. So uh, as soon as the students come in, uh, we, in fact, before the students come in, uh, the students had an online project. This is the year five students. They had an uh, online virtual project. It's actually a community project. But one of the things that they, they have to do would also be uh, going into uh, prevention of COVID. So that's their first introduction before coming into the university. Then uh, two days coming into the university, all they do is to get uh, information and training on uh, the prevention of uh, COVID-19, uh, to be, uh, to practice or go through training in the clinic um, and ensuring that they understand all the protocol. And what we have is that uh, we have a pre-dental visit. This is part of our protocol that all, all patients for the students uh, or even for the lecturers at this time will be only through phone appointment. So at that time, patient evaluation uh, prior to arrival is done through telephone or WhatsApp communication. And if there's any history, uh, if a patient has fever or any history of contact, then we do not give an appointment and we uh, decide on when to actually give the patient the appointment. And we specifically do not, um, do not um, have service, emergency service um, for um, patients uh, who, have, um, who are positive because uh, the uh, Malaysia has a good network of health service in the Ministry of Health. So all the patients who are positive, uh, I mean, if through our, through our communication, if are positive, they will be uh, referred to or going to the Ministry of Health. Uh, of course, uh, we are unable to uh, tackle if they, are, um, if they are without symptoms and they have not been tested yet. So those are, I think, the areas that we are all worried about. Um, so if a patient is answered yes to any of our routine questions, uh, which means um, do, you, do you have symptoms? And uh, our um, National Council have uh, identified areas that they will call red areas, yellow areas, and green areas. Red areas is the worst area where you have, you have people uh, with COVID and there is a cluster there. So uh, pa if patient tells the address, then we will say uh, you, we we will not give an appointment and say wait till your area becomes a green area, and uh, if we know uh, through this phone if we know that patient recovered from COVID nineteen, uh, we recommend to postpone the dental appointment treatment for at least a month. 
And uh, during the day of the visit, all patients will be taken temperature and this double. One is at the entrance gate and one is outside the dental clinic. We, we actually have um, three, uh, we actually have three um, student dental clinic which house 75 dental chairs per clinic. And in a normal situation, we only have, uh, all patients go to level one, that's a, a registration counter. But because of this situation, we've shifted that we only use one clinic, which is on level eight, and the, um, the evaluation counter is outside the clinic. And we followed our DINS council protocol that if there is no barrier, uh, for example, uh, if, the, if there is a counter or there is no barrier, uh, then the, um, the staff who is doing the uh, patient evaluation and doing the, um, uh, the taking temperature would need to wear a face shield. And uh, of course, everybody wears a face mask. Yeah? And at this time, even though patient has been asked um, during a phone appointment, patient will be re-evaluated again uh, where a questionnaire is given for patients um, to answer. And um, social or physical distancing um, is being practiced where uh, patients are seated uh, two meters distance between each other. And we have simple uh, crosses here to prevent the patient from sitting side by side. And we have a, a single entry and exit for the clinic for the patients. And we also have a donning and do doffing of um, the room. And uh, in the first two days, the, st uh, the students are taught uh, all this and they are taught um, to as per the uh, OSHA and here is also per Malaysian Dental Association guideline. Actually, it is this council, but it is a conglomeration of all these guidelines put in together. And then uh, we don't request that they wear shoe cover, but we insist that they have covered shoes and socks mm -hmm. and a disposable ground and drip um, for the dentist and the drip for the patient. Uh, they use a disposable cap. Uh, they all um, use double uh, examination gloves. Surgical gloves are not used as only examination is done. Uh, but when they're actually managing the patient, they, um, they will be using the surgical glove. Uh, they use the face shield, and this is to be clean after every procedure. And together, they, they will use double, double mask, and they will use a face shield and a goggle. Uh, the DINS Council, uh, recommends N95, but we put that or equivalent because number one is cost, but uh, just like in uh, Thailand, we were not able to get N95, even if you want to buy at that time. Okay, and so, so we have to create our own ways of, um, of um, a treatment and with which are aerosol producing. And this, this is not Masa, just to show an example, one dental school that actually uh, makes a plastic door to their clinic and uses this um, a suction for the cubicle. And they make a few cubicles for that so that all the patients who are actually needing to, to, do, um, to do such treatment which produces aerosol, they will be rotating them into these areas. In, um, in MASA, I think we, uh, we prepare for barriers for one area of the clinic because ours is a very wide clinic and each of our cubicle is actually very wide. And one cubicle to another is almost seven meters apart, all right? So what we, because we have 78 chairs, or uh, 75 chairs, uh, 25 cubicles. And so we limit that at one time, only 20 cubicles are functioning. We closed up one area and in the one area, the, the cubicle will be um, at one and an, an empty one. And we even organize it as a cross so that the distance is uh, way past uh, the seven or eight meters. 
and we, as I said, we, we have not got into uh, doing the barriers and all that, but we are planning as more of the students are coming, but we try and control uh, as much as possible um, not to do the aerosol procedures. For example, all the perio now um, for this period of time uh, will not be using uh, ultrasonic scaler. It will just be doing manual. Okay. And um, the, our, the, the, the way that our clinic is, is that we have a corridor and then on, on one side is the big clinic, but this clinic is actually separated by a wall with doors. So this is outside where I think the assistants, uh, I mean, when, when they start, they actually collect all the, the consumables that they need, right? And um, inside they work in pairs and just like what uh, was said earlier that one uh, will always be the one moving around. Uh, but working in pairs for our student is actually the norm. We have been practicing that. And um, did we also, um, our extra oral radiographs such as panoramic um, uh, will be appropriate alternatives to intraoral radiograph. But I, I presume that when you're talking about endo, I think we still need to do intraoral radiograph, but it's all try to keep it to a minimum. So our students is now almost over the year five. And uh, yes, uh, Part of the part of the um, minimum uh, the requirements was shifted uh, from having it to do in patients to having it to do a, or in simulation lab or either on extracted tools or on or using the uh, dummies uh, the simulator. So uh, we so we concentrate on the clinical only the ones that we really feel that the students really require before they finish. So uh, they will finish around end of July. So all online teaching continued with clinical sessions replaced by case-based learning. Because a lot we get a lot of questions from our management, uh, from our higher up. Uh, they ask to us, what about your student learning time? What happened to the clinical time? Uh, so what we did was, instead of just only doing lecture, we actually do, um, during this clinical time, we do lots and lots of case-based learning uh, where it's all about problem solving. So that was why we have a lot of interactive uh, to do this case-based learning. So in that sense, um, for every time that they're supposed to be in clinic, we have this, so there is really no loss of student learning time, but we need to extend our academic calendar to additional of three months, because we're supposed to finish uh, in uh, August, but uh, for some, we may have to finish like in September. Uh, although for this year five, we, we probably will finish uh, end of August. And uh, the, so when they come in for the clinical sessions, it's purely to finish their uh, requirement, uh, the clinical sessions or the simulation sessions, is purely to finish the requirement. We don't run any face-to-face any -face classes other than the clinical and simulation. And uh, these, uh, therefore, uh, because we're so controlled by our uh, Malaysian quali um, qualified agency that talks about SLT. So we prepared that uh, we have not really uh, reduced the SLT. And um, this, this looks the same. Okay. The uh, clinical session, uh, yeah, this one is the same. Yeah, the next one is actually the high stake final exam. All our five years have got a final examination. Uh, I mean, the uh, final examination for them to progress or to exit. Yeah? And this final examination, um, we will have a theory and we will have an OSCE. And so the, and um, so we actually keep it at face to face. So we waited for them to be coming back to campus because we do not have the expertise. And in a short time, we think that we are unable to control uh, in some way um, for online assessment. And so we tried online assessment more for the uh, continuous assessment. We call it mini tests and things like that. 
yeah uh, and so so now the fact that the government has given them to come back so we're able to move back and do this face-to-face uh, -face final exam although the dean's council at that time when we meet we are were not sure yet whether the government will going to allow the students to come back so we have talked about uh, any school that feel that they are able to do online assessments, they can do online assessments for their theory, but not for their clinical, which is all the OSCEs. So all this planning is to ensure that all year students will be able to progress when the new academic year, uh, which will start in October 2020. Uh, and this academic year will end next year, August 2021. So in so now that our year one to year year one to uh, year four uh, is coming back, so we've staged it that our year five will be doing exam in August and the others will be doing in September. And uh, we do have additional years, which is year one and year two from. Uh, Penang International Data College because we actually they uh, they actually franchised to us two years with us and the the three years in Penang so we actually have the additional year one and year two students plus our year three and year four students so uh, with that uh, I would like to thank uh, the PIDC Dean for allowing me to use the picture to show you and uh, my staff for helping me with this. And I have to say that uh, I have not put in a lot of things, uh, but I hope there will be questions. Uh, and I think in that way, I, I will probably be able to answer all the gaps in my uh, lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rosna. It's very good uh, presentation. And thank you for sharing us the clinical education of yours during COVID-19 pandemic. Now we will go into the uh, next session, Q&A, to discuss uh, some of uh, Q&A from the participants. Till now, there is almost 29 uh, Q&A. But before, I would like to announce our participants to join this uh, Virtual International Clinical Education Conference from Zoom webinar. The maximum is uh, 582, but now a little bit degrees. Uh, in, and from uh, the some of them is joined with uh, channel YouTube, uh, more than 30 uh, participants. So now we will like go into the. Uh, answering the questions. And the first question is going to the, I think this is the, the first question is very anti-mainstream regarding negative pressure and extra oral suction. Please elaborate in content of WHO recent announcement regarding strong possibility that COVID-19 is airborne disease. Maybe some of the panelists can give answering these questions, please. Uh, Professor Cortina, you can give some answering about this. Okay, I think what is the question here? The very anti regarding negative pressure. Um, um, Okay, so I think you know, I, I, I know that recently um, a lot of uh, people actually, a lot of uh, scientists uh, push, uh, you know, make a consensus that uh, this COVID is an airborne disease. Um, yes, I think, you know, I think the, for us, you know, we, we try to eliminate or try to reduce the amount of uh, virus uh, either on the air or uh, the one in the aerosol, you know, as much as possible. You know, I think that will be the goal of the, uh, you know, for us as the health provider. Uh, we can use that by using, uh, you know, many people, they use a UV system, uh, they use a negative pressure, they use, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, as uh vacuum, you know. So, but you have to understand that uh, actually, the bigger the room, uh, you know, the bigger the clinic. For example, uh, for example, our clinic is around. Let me try to think. How many chairs would that be? Probably around twenty to third, twenty to twenty-five in one room. Okay, so. You know, the bigger the room, it's going to be harder for us to sterilize it. It's going to be very, very harder for us to use UV, for example. Uh, it's going to be harder for us to to create a negative pressure room for that big, you know, so for such a big room like that. Because, uh, well, on top of that, you know, a lot of traffic, right? A lot of traffic between patients and also providers. So in and out, in and out. Um, so I think my recommendation for people in Indonesia is that you know the best thing to do is to try to uh, engineer your dental unit, make sure that your uh, unit has a good, you know, has a high vacuum suction, and then uh, control, uh, ask your students to use a rubber dam whenever it's needed. Uh, and also, you know, try to do social distancing between one unit to another unit. Um, and then, you know, some people say, okay, or oh, open the windows. Yeah, yeah, probably you can, you can do that. I mean, you know, if you have a uh, if it doesn't affect your um, temperature inside your clinic, because I know people in Indonesia they are using level three uh, hazmat, so I know if that is going to be very hot for them. So if I cannot imagine if you know, if you don't use AC, you know I don't know what you know I I cannot imagine how can you use that. Okay, and that will be from my um, that will be my answer. Yeah. Opinion? Yeah, yeah. May I add on something that uh, we have a, you know, uh, we call main clinic uh, in, in our school that is very big. It's about 84 dental chairs and it's uh, like a central air conditioning system. We don't know what to do. So, so far we put, uh, you know, about 30, uh, I don't know how to call it, but uh, this, this equipment, you know, we put into the pipeline of the air conditioner uh, inside the ceiling, you know, and they will have a UV uh, when, when the exhaust, because the central uh, system, they, they recirculate all the time, right? And if we have uh, infected air, infected air will be uh, sucked into the pipeline and then treated by the UV and ion. We have like a plasma ion to kill inside, in which, you know, the company claim that it do kill uh, germs certainly and also virus, but I don't know how to, you know, to, to validate it anyway, but uh, at least we feel better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> we, we really don't know whether they kill germs inside the pipeline or not, but we feel better that, you know, we put the, uh, the, the sign that this uh, 84 dental units have, have been, you know, uh, uh, disinfected used uh, by the air system, something like that. So people, when, when they see it, they, they feel comfortable. But I think the most important thing is the screening. You have to screen the COVID patient out. In Thailand, we, we cannot find any COVID infected patient 60 days already inside our country, only the imported one from somewhere else. But anyway, people still say that, you know, some people, you know, like a carrier, they walk with a symptom, but they have some, some you know, virus infected already, but no sign or symptom. We really don't know what to do anyway, but uh, we, we, we say only, you know, our clinic will, you know, we prepare for every, infected aerosol, even though it's influenza or whatever, or even strep mutant, we don't want the strep mutant to, you know, to attach on our gown, on our clothes, something like that. So that's why we spend a lot of money for it. But we still cannot find any COVID case, even once, you know, to come to our school. So, so sometimes uh, just wonder whether anyone here in this, you know, webinar, have an evidence of a uh, transmit COVID infection in the dental clinic around the world. I, I have a meeting uh, within the six dental school around the, the, the global. They said they, they have never heard of that, but anyway, they have to be very careful about it. 
So, so I have to say only that, that you know, in, 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 in my case in Bangkok, we, we don't have a COVID patient so far for 60 days already, but we still have to be careful about other germs, other virus, other influenza or even TB or what else. That's why we spend a lot of money on it. So uh, let's just go back that uh, I think uh, I, I, if someone can you know, prove that those uh, ion bombardment or whatever that uh, they use an ion or plasma to kill the germ in the air work efficiently, I think that, that might be a good you know, reason. And, and, and you can imagine you know, if you have your own dental clinic, no matter small or big, and you have uh, the split type air conditioning system, when the infected air, you know, uh, is sucked into the, the, the filter in the air conditioning uh, machine, whatever, so it will stay there. How can we kill them? That's another problem. So some, some people uh, suggest that we can use ozone when we are out. For example, if we close the clinic on Saturday evening and, and then Sunday we're not working, on the clinic, so we just leave the ozone to kill everything, you know, in inside the, you know, the the small area or whatever. The ozone will help, but it's very dangerous to the human. Also, you have to be careful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Suchit. You have a little bit of opinion, Professor Rosna, about the aerosol. Um, I mean, uh, we actually believe in having all those. But I mean, my, my discussion with the infectious disease expert in my own school is that this, uh, vi this virus is uh, quite large. And since we are actually not uh, doing, it's not like in a hot situation where it's going to rise. So, uh, so we talked about, uh, I think studies have shown that it could go to about uh, four to six years. And therefore, we feel that in this situation, uh, if we can do the physical distancing, um, so for now, I'm not saying that it will always be, I mean, we still have to move on and look for better alternative. But for now, uh, it's more of having these viruses is supposed to condense. And I think we, one of the things that the Dean's Council have put in is that we have to have at least two hours. We have to clean the area and we cannot use that for the next patient until at least two hours. So for us, we do it in the morning and then we do it in the afternoon uh, because after all the cleaning is done, yeah. Thank you, Professor Rosna. We move to the uh, second question uh, from uh, Dr. Maria Purbiati from uh, RSGM Universitas Indonesia. Uh, pertanyaannya untuk Dr. Cortino. Dalam ruang aerosol generating procedures, apakah yang ruang AGP, yang uh, aerosol generating uh, procedures, yang non, bagaimana sistem air conditionernya dan tata udaranya, um, yeah. 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 In our clinic, is um, there's no difference between uh, AGP and non, non uh, AGP uh, clinics uh, so far. Okay, so uh, the difference only uh, we provide uh, high vacuum suction tips and also uh, iso iso dry, and now uh, the, the the new tips. Okay, that's the only difference. Um, you know the Maybe in other school they, they do have the, the rooms uh, for non aerosol only, but uh, for aerosol only. But uh, in our uh, our school, uh, we don't we don't have that. Uh, so um, you know again because uh, the room is uh, the clinic is so big, and uh, I don't think we have time uh, to generate one. Uh, so far, you know I think again the, the most important part is uh, as the uh, from Sinchit said, you know, I think the, 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 the screening of the patient is very important, you know, so we, we did screening three times. Um, and also actually previously there was a question also about uh, the test, COVID test, 
uh, do we do it? Uh, actually, our school, there was a the discussion about it among all the uh, dental uh, educators in the, in the US and uh, a lot of people asking, okay, if we're gonna do it, who's gonna pay for it? Uh, I heard from even from uh, UCSF, you know, they try to do it for every patient. And then for me, it doesn't really make sense. Why? Because, you know, COVID test here in the US is around 200 bucks, okay, $200. People come to the dental school for a filling, you know, and only going to cost them $100. So there's no way they're going to pay $200 for COVID screening, uh, you know, for $150 of a treatment. It's impossible. It doesn't make sense. And on top of that, you know, dental treatment is, uh, you know, you know that we, you know, they have to come many times, right? Uh, you know, not only one appointment. So it's impossible for them. You know, we ask them to to come again and have another test. Uh, I support the idea of having a test for a big uh, operation, like in the oral surgery. Uh, yes, that one can be done, um, but not for the not for the small, you know, uh, small procedures like a filling or you know, like a minor minor procedures. Um, and on top of that, we cannot really tell. You know, for example, we do the test now; uh, it's negative, but it could be in two weeks. It could be positive. So we don't know when when to. Uh, you know, how often do we have to uh, uh, to do the test, uh, even for the provider, not only for the patients, but also for the for the faculty too. You know, we don't do that because you know it's just unless, um, well, at least in the U.S., unless you show uh, that you are, uh, you know, having a, a pulmonary problem, you cannot breathe, and then you can then then the hospital will test you. Otherwise, if you just have a fever, they're gonna tell you, okay, why don't you just isolate yourself? Why? Because, you know, because it's just, a, um, you know, this is emergency situation. So they prioritize people who is having uh, uh, breathing problems, at least. Thank you. That is one from the Chida Chandra. Bagaimana design negative pressure chamber in Illinois? Oh, okay. So I think, you know, I, I don't really know how, how, you know, I think you need you know, theoretically, you need a you need a vacuum, right, to, to suck the, the air out. You know, all, all the way to the outside. Uh, you know, so base. But let me tell you something. You know, this is the real story. Okay, the one uh, is happening in our school. Uh, so the dean, you know, our negative pressure was created on the first floor. However, our general clinic was on the second floor and the third floor. Originally, that negative pressure was created for emergency only. Okay, but now. It's very hard to, for, you know, to ask the students to go to work in the negative pressure room in the on the first floor. Okay, uh, why? Because you know, because everything is not equipped. You know, the student they are not uh, used to it, and then uh, the faculty also. You know, we we need a faculty to to go into that room also. So you need to find a schedule. You need to find a faculty who can supervise it. So it's basically no currently no one actually is using the room. Okay, it's just because, you know, it's very, very hard to schedule the patients, you know, to use, because somebody has to be responsible for scheduling, somebody, you know, you need an assistant, you have to put a new assistant there, you have to put, you know, you have to ask the faculty to supervise there, and then the student, you know, they don't, you know, student, they just don't like to, to be in the new environment, unfortunately, they like to be in the old environment, you know, that's the way it is. Okay, so for those of you who, who is thinking about making a new, uh, a negative room in your in your clinic, you may you know I know Indonesia they the school they have so many students right they have probably like around 150 per class, uh, you know so if you only have 10 for example 10 negative room you know so you can imagine how can you you know how to organize the uh, you know the schedule you know there's going to be I'm sure there's going to be a lot of drama there so you know so for sure it's going to be a lot of drama so just just be ready for that <laughs> okay so. That's, that's my input for the people in Indonesia. Next question, Professor Cortino. How many times can we reuse the, the mark and uh, 95? Um, you know, actually there's no, you know, it's, it's, it's everything is very debating. Uh, there's no really, uh, you know, rule of thumb here. Uh, for, for, you know, for me, uh, you, you know, for example, you know, I think that, that we have to think how to how to extend the life of this N95. Okay, first of all, we have to use the surgical mask. So, just if you get exposure, exposed with the 
with the aerosol, you're going to remove the, the other one, okay, the surgical mask, okay. And then you also have to tell your female faculty also, please do not use uh, makeup. Okay, because when you use makeup, you know, you're, it's going to stain the, uh, your N95. So it's going to jeopardize, it's going to ruin the, the seal. Okay, so that's, you know, that's, that's something that we tell our faculty. Of course, you know, uh, Indonesia, you know, for religious reason, you know, you have a lot of hair around your face. That one also you have to inform your faculty as well. Okay. Um, I usually change it, uh, you know, maybe uh, I'm in the clinic twice, twice a week or three times a week, and I usually change it when uh, you know when the rubber you know broken, okay, detached. Uh, so probably like around two, four, two, three weeks, okay, because uh, we don't really do a lot of aerosol procedure in our clinic so, so far, okay. But still, you know, when you talk when because we 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 work closely with the students, so we have to use it. Uh, so I only use it, you know, I only change it two, three weeks uh, for for two to three weeks because of the pandemic situation. I know it's not ideal. Um, you know, but you know what we just have to live with it. Okay, uh, we don't do fat test. Uh, I'm sorry, fit test. A lot of people say they recommend uh, to do fit test, uh, but due to this pandemic situ situation, there's no way you can do fit test for for every faculty. Okay, it's gonna take a long time, and also it's very expensive to do that too. Uh, what you can do, you can do a negative pressure, uh, negative uh, check, and also positive check. That's another way to to check it. But there's no way we can do a uh, fit test, you know, for, for our faculty and for our student too. Not only faculty, but the students. So you can imagine we have uh, around 120 students per class. So that will be times four. That's already 400. So we're basically we have around 600 people, you know, in our building. So there's no way we can do fit test. Thank you, Professor Cortina. Uh, we're going to the other questions. The questions from. Uh, the other dean from uh, the dean of Universitas Erlangga, Fakultas Dentistry, uh, Associate Professor Darmawan Setianto. I am Darmawan. When uh, when our students don't have sufficient time to interact with patients, even we implement Internet of Things, how to manage the achievement of our students' competencies on time? I think, uh, could you please your uh, opinion, Professor Suchit? Uh, could you please uh, repeat the question again? Uh, I, I, I understand that, uh, I mean, uh, we don't have much time now, so how can we complete the, the work for the student on time? Is that correct? Yeah, to, to, get, to get competence for the students. Oh yes, okay. Uh, in Thailand, you know, uh, we uh, all the we have a den uh, a consortium of the faculty of dentistry, and we and we sat and discussed about what shall we do with this. So we designed to pair the student. In that case, they have less time to work on the patient, right? But uh, we agree that uh, we have to ask the you know the instructor, the clinical instructor, to you know, to, to, to efficiently you know, help them, you know, to finish things more quickly. I mean, we have to work more, something like that. Because the dental council in Thailand, they don't allow us to reduce the number of minimal requirement in order to, you know, to get the license. But they don't mind about the working time. Therefore, we have to, you know, adjust ourselves. How can we make a, for example, in, in, in the past, you know, one student can make one feelings in one visit. So perhaps uh, we, we have to try to make two in one visit by, you know, the clinical instructor keep walking around and, you know, help supporting them, something like that. Uh, there's no way that the dental still will reduce the requirement. That means they need a competent again. Uh, if uh, our student don't have much time, you know, to work on, uh, many cases, uh, they might not have uh, good competency in order to get the license. So we have to do in that way so far. But it just begins, though. I don't know what will happen. We have to wait and see in, in my country. Thank you, Professor Suchit. Uh, I'm going to uh, move to Professor Rosna about this issue. Yeah. About um, yes. Um, 
we, as I said, we actually discussed and we uh, reduced requirements, but competency is there because uh, when we introduce competency, um, we are saying that you cannot equate the number of cases someone does to being competent. So we decided that every student must have the competency test. However, before a competency test, they must have a certain number of requirements that they have to do. So that is the requirement that we were talking about just now as a one-off that they, uh, for this time, it's a one-off that is reduced. But uh, for the future students, uh, if this gets better, they still will go back to the original uh, requirement. And when the Dean's Council make this decision, it goes through two committees. After the Dean's Council, it is uh, the technical committee. And then it goes to the, um, the Malaysian Dental Council. So Malaysian Dental Council has just approved uh, our decision for this one-off. Uh, uh, may I add something on? Uh, I heard that Hong Kong says uh, their student cannot graduate on time this year because of the you know the the outbreak of the the COVID. So in that case, they they close their clinic quite long. So so they don't have time to do it. Uh, I agree with the Professor Russell that uh, there are two things. First, uh, before you are eligible to sit in the clinical exam, you have to, you know, uh, pile up. I mean, uh, you, you have to practice at the minimum requirement requested by the dental council in Thailand. And then once you collect the case enough uh, for them, they will allow you to sit in the exam. So that's the second step. So it's quite tough, you know, but anyway, uh, this year, uh, unfortunately, the dental council in Thailand, they, do not reduce anything for us. So we have to find a way. Thank you. Dr. Rosen, can I say something? Okay, it's okay. Please, Professor. Speak. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, in our school, um, we do uh, calculations, okay? So how many hours uh, did we lose uh, during the COVID? For example, you know, we, we lost, uh, we were closed for three to three months. You know, for example, I'm just making it up, okay? So we lost 2000 hours of clinic. Okay, so, so the question is, how can we compensate that 2000 hours of clinic? Okay, so previously our uh, session was, uh, we start the clinic from 9.30 until 4.30. Now we extend it from 8.30 until 5.30. Okay, and then also every, on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we also have the night clinic. So we, it's op we in our clinic open until 7, 7.30. Okay, so there was also discussions to open the clinic on Saturday too. And we also try to reduce the holidays, uh, for example, reduce the holidays during the Christmas and Thanksgiving. As you know, Thanksgiving is a big holiday here in the US and also Christmas. So we try to uh, reduce that, that holiday for the student. Okay, so, so you know, I, I think people in Indonesia, you have to think, you know, you cannot it's impossible for you to ask the same requirement without adding, without compensating the time loss, right? So that means, you know, so if you're asking the students to do this, to perform the same, either you, you know, you have to add the time for them to work, right? Uh, they're working time, so you have to add it, okay? Otherwise, you know, it's impossible. You know, I think it's unfair also for the student, you know, to be treated that way. You know, we ask the same expectation, but but the, 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 the time that they will, that, that they are provided for them is actually, is, 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 you know, is reduced, okay? So here the student, you know, they, that's the way we do it, at least the way they pre-provide it to them so that they don't complain, okay? Uh, of course, there's a lot of factors, you know, maybe some, maybe the patient doesn't want to come, you know, so, but that's, that's our, already out of our control, okay? So as a faculty, at least we provide them an additional time to compensate the time loss. Thank you. We, we also compensate for the student. And you know, I have a big complaint from the faculty. <laughs> but, but, but you know, but they, they forgot that they, you know, they stopped working for a while when they had the outbreak. But when we asked them to come on Saturday, they complained. I could understand that. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So we, we asked the residents to, uh, to supervise, for example, for the night clinic, 
uh, you know, we we uh, they, the school uh, provide a stipend for the residents to to supervise the clinic, for example. You know, that's that's one way to do it. Uh, I think there's uh, any question from uh, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Nina or Prof Eri or Doctor Hadian, please. Excuse me. Yes. That question. You have any question? No, no. So we we still have a lot of questions in here. Uh, I like to looking for next one is. So maybe we have uh, to stick with the time. It's about uh, uh, for Professor Corcino, protocol apa yang diaplikasikan pada instalasi radiologi, radiologi rooms. Ketika melakukan prosedur intraoral radiografi, apakah pasien juga melakukan kumur-kumur povidon iodin sebelum dilakukan paparan intraoral radiografi atau cukup saat melakukan tindakan di dental unit? Uh, oh, okay. That's a good question. Well, well at least uh, you know, uh, in our uh, the clinic, uh, the, in our clinic, semuanya we are doing, uh, we are using a digital X-ray. Okay, we are doing a digital X-ray. So we have a sensor. So the sensor, well, even before the COVID, the sensor is always covered by plastic. Okay, so that you know, when we're inside the mouth, you know, and then uh, you know, you use it inside the mouth, and after that, you remove your plastic, and then you spray, you spray your uh, your sensors. That's the way we do it. Um, you know, so. Uh, I don't think there's anything uh, different regarding the unit. You know, the unit, of course, you know, the apron, you always have to, uh, uh, you know, disinfect, spray it, you know, be after after each patient. Uh, you know, that's just a, re or just a regular protocol. Uh, one question from uh, Professor Rosna. Please explain how you develop minimal clinical requirement for the students. Um. The minimum clinical requirement was developed as a group by all the uh, deans at the dean's council. So uh, most of the, we have two types. Uh, first, we decide what are the competencies. And the comp competencies can be, maybe at the early years, will be more of simulation lab. And in clinical years, it will be the competency in the clinic. So for every competency, um, for every competency, uh, the dean uh, receive the dean's council receives suggestions from the disciplines of different schools. For example, we may have a competency for prosthetic dentistry, which is body building. Yeah. So um, then everybody will chip in, and we will discuss whether that uh, the, how many patients that they have to do to be enough for them to sit for competencies. And here, when we talk about competencies, it's not the final exam. This competencies goes along all the time throughout the uh, year three, year four, or year five. So uh, that, that is why, one of also the reason why uh, we were able to say, reduce some competence, uh, reduce requirement because many of the competencies have already been done. It's just that this COVID situation has uh, sort of uh, touched on some competency. For example, uh, there is a competency on crown and bridge. Now, because crown and bridge is not something that the dentist, um, the students goes out and do day to day and they will develop their skills by going for further. So uh, we shifted it to partly in patient uh, of and the rest in uh, if there is a patient, but if there's no patient, we shifted that um, competency uh, to the requirement to be on uh, in simulation lab and then the competency. So the comp competency is developed uh, together by all the, all the deans based on their suggestion. And the competencies are mainly on um, prostodontics, uh, operative dentistry, most of the bread and butter of dentistry, and some competencies on oral surgery. Thank you, thank you, Professor Rosna. I think uh, we almost uh, finished to the time, but one question for the all speakers. How you arrange the turn of dental staff working time 
is all dental staff have to attend the clinic? And how about those who have comorbid disease? Uh, please, Professor Suchit. This is about the regulation of dental staff working time. Uh, what was the question again, please? Uh, how you arrange the turn of dental staff working time? Is a dental staff have uh, a, to attend the clinic? And how about those who have comorbid disease for the dental staff and also for the uh, students? I, I think so far we, we, we just do it exactly the same. Like we don't have a COVID. So everybody have their, you know, uh, clinical working time that they have to attend. There's, there's no, there's not any problem at all. So they know their duty and they go to the clinic. So they have the same working time on the clinic. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Only, you know, only when we had outbreak, you know, we just started, uh, the full capacity a month ago. But before that, we just set up, as I told you, uh, we, we set up 10 teams in our dental school and each team will come, you know, for example, the first team come on Monday, second come on Tuesday. So when the first team come on Monday, they will return again in two weeks time. That means it's more than 14 days already. We worry about if, if uh, you know, after they, they uh, uh, looking at patient or, or treat patient on Monday and they had one infected patient came in without, uh, like a, we, we, we didn't know. So in that case, the whole team will have to be quarantined. You know, otherwise it will mix up and very confused. So at that time it's the outbreak time for us. But so far now we, it's really hard to find a COVID patient, you know, or COVID you know, walking around in, in, the, in the city. As I told you that they, they, they asked uh, 2,000 staff uh, from our university to, to swap and they find nothing. So, so they gave up. So, so far, I, I think, I think we, we do it as normal. And again, you know, if we have a good screening. In the past, we have online screening. Now we give up already. But I think online uh, screening is very, Online screening is very good, you know, you can, we, we use the line, like a WhatsApp or line. Uh, they, we ask them to, you know, to, to uh, approach us first and we will ask them what they want to do. Sometimes we ask them to take a photo, what's happened to you? And we discuss, and then the, uh, in your case, I think you can uh, be, uh, you know, classified as an elective case. So you can come later at the outbreak time. So we, we consider to do, to treat only the urgency and emergency at that time, for example. So I think online screening is very good, but of course you, you have to on-site screening, you, you have to rely on it very much. And even the same, I think uh, we, we have to, uh, first of all, when they enter the building, we have one checkpoint and we enter each clinic, they will have their own checkpoint to screen the patient to make sure that this patient uh, has no, you know, infectious disease, and then they can treat normally. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Suchit. I think uh, that is the the end of this our session. I would like to give a very big appreciation to all of speakers for their kind uh, sharing and brightness as with all the clinical education consideration during COVID-19 pandemic. It's very important in order to keep the quality of education in this uh, situation. Again, thank you very much. And I'd like to uh, I'd like to return to forum going to the uh, a master of ceremony, Dr. Gigi Yossi Ioannita, SPBM, please. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, a very great discussion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants. Before we close the conference today, there will be delivered of the appreciation certificate to all of the speakers. First is for Professor Cortina Sokojo, DDS PhD, 
This is the certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much for your participation in our event today. And the thank next you. is, thank you very much, Professor. Looking forward to see you again in the next event. And the next is a certificate of appreciation for Professor Suchit Poltong from Chulangkorn University, Thailand. Thank you very much, Professor. And then the last is a certificate of appreciation for Professor Dr. Rosna Binti Mohamad Zain from Masa University, Malaysia. Thank you very much, Professor, for sharing your knowledge and experiences in this virtual international clinical education conference. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, these things participant. Now we come to the end of our conference today. Once again, I would like to thank you to all of participants and also our great speakers uh, from various country, our chairperson, and also from all the uh, organizing committee and also from, and also for the recent association of the faculty of dentistry, Afdogi, has uh, organized this event. And once again, we hope that we will see you again in our next virtual international clinical education conference. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon. Selamat siang. Can we take a picture before we leave? Yeah. Yes, Professor. Shall we? Okay. Okay. Bunina, bisa keluar, Prof. Cortino. Shall we take a picture? We're going to. Okay, uh, Prof. Cortino. And then uh, Bunina, please. Bunina, Bunina, please. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, one more, one more. One, two, three, four. Where is Bunina? Thank you very much, Prof. Cortino, Prof. Rosna, Prof. Suchit. Really appreciation. Actually, this is uh, a lot of question that we have to answer. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so. You, you Actually, you can ask them to to WhatsApp me if they if they need uh, if sure. they you know if they want to ask me. Okay. Sure, sure. So I think uh, some some uh, some of the the participants still here. So please, uh, if you have a question, uh, so you can uh, WhatsApp directly to Prof Cortino mm -hmm. and also. Uh, actually, I have one question for Prof Suchit. Prof Suchit, how many faculty member do you have actually? Uh, Unmute, please. Unmute, Prof. Suchit. Oh, sorry. Uh, about 160. Oh, 160. Okay. So I just wonder about every two weeks you you, you have a text for them, you know, like maybe you have a lot of uh, uh, faculty members. So that's why i just curious about that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you can set up 10 teams uh, very easily. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is very nice, though, because uh, uh, Indonesia, uh, you know, we we just start to 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 have a, a guidance to starting the the, the clinical clinical uh, activity. We haven't started yet. Just only in the phantom. It's not innovation. <laughs> yeah, Prof. Rosna, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, Prof. Thank Suchit, you. have bye a nice, bye. have a nice weekend. Thank you, Prof. Cortino. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ruslin. Terima kasih. Pak Ruslin, terima kasih luar biasa Anda. Terima kasih. Keren, ya. keren. Terima kasih Mbak Yosi. Terima kasih Mas terima kasih, uh, Afif. Terima kasih, Afif. Terima kasih Prof. Terima kasih Dok. Terima kasih Prof. Terima kasih, Prof. Thank you, Professor thank, thank you for all participants. Yeah. For attending the meeting. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Prof. Cortina. Bye bye. Bye bye. Terima kasih, Dr. Yosi. Terima kasih, Pak Sejen. Thank you. Ayo, ayo, Mbak Yosi, keren. Kamu keren banget. Terima kasih, Prof. Mantap, mantap. Mantap. Pak Sejen, sip. Terima kasih, Dr. Yosi. Siap, dok. Mas Afif, terima kasih ya. Ya yeah, Prof, sama-sama Prof. Kamu keluar dong, kegantenganmu dikeluarkan dong, kegantenganmu. Oh. Ah, gitu dong. Di belakang Masa layar. Tidak bisa digodain. Di belakang layar terus. Ya, dari tadi pasti orang pengen lihat siapa sih di belakang layar. Siap, siap Prof.
Terima kasih sekali. Terima kasih. Oke, sayang Bu Nina tadi nggak keluar ya kemana ya beliau ya? Mungkin nah. lagi ada acara ya? Iya ada acara ini sudah berusan izin. Siap siap. Oke, assalamualaikum. Terima kasih Bang Rosli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Ini foto dulu ini foto dulu foto dulu. Foto foto foto. Oke oke. Foto dulu ya. Satu, dua tiga. Satu dua tiga lagi. Satu dua tiga. Oke. Terima kasih. Mantap, siap siap Mantap, dong. Afif. bagus backgroundnya. Suaranya agak putus-putus ya punya saya. Jaringan dong. Kayaknya iya jaringan dong. Tidak bisa menjalin jaringan. Iya. maksimal. Iya dok. Soalnya kalau kayak sekarang kan yang pakainya banyak dok. Kita peserta juga banyak jadi jaringannya mungkin agak uh, overwhelm dibandingkan waktu kita gladi setiap malam. Memang harus di fakultas lebih uh, kuat. Witriana Latifa, ya betul untuk uh, online YouTube biasanya dia ini uh, bisa disaksikan mulai minimal 24 jam. Jadi diproses dulu oleh YouTube. Jadi untuk rilisnya mungkin minimal 24 jam ke depan baru bisa ditonton kembali di channel kita Dentistry Hasan Yudin University. Untuk materi ada pada masing-masing uh, presenter. Jadi mungkin palingan bisa nonton di YouTube channel kita saja. Mungkin mulai uh, dari 24 jam ke depan baru bisa diakses. Channelnya di Dentistry Hasanuddin University uh, ada tertulis di uh, screen kami saat ini. Terima kasih. Dentistry Hasanuddin University ada di screen kami. Terima kasih. Oke, okay. terima kasih dok. Banyak ya. Hey, dok. Yeah. Ini malam. Salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Melanjut judisium. Siap. Iya betul judisium. Lanjut semangat dok.